the India market. Hello and welcome to Storyboard. I'm Shubani Gharat. Entering the month of February, the air is dense with the chatter of love. First ringing in the season of love, Cadbury Dairy Milk Silk has released a new TVC that showcases how consumers can access unforgettable love tips via QR code scan on the packs and make their Valentine's Day special. And then on the other hand, Cadbury 5 Star through their campaign is helping singles navigate through the lovesick zones and dodge gushy couples as a part of this year's do nothing proposition to tell us more we are joined in by nitin seni who recently took charge of india marketing for mondelez as their new vp in november he speaks to us about many things including his plans to steward the beloved cadbury brand forward and ambitious goals set by their cmo of making mondelez a global digital snacking leader nitin welcome to cnbc tv 18 so good to have you on the show for the first time Thank you, Shivani. I'm really glad to be here. So let's begin this conversation by speaking about the Valentine's Day campaigns. Okay, at one end, Mondelez has launched a campaign uh, for uh, uh, you know, of course, five star that is siding with the singles and you know, helping them find the mush free zone. And at the other end, for Silk, you are extending how far will you go for love around the Valentine's Day? First, let me ask you. Whose side is Mondelez on? The singles or the couples? Yeah, that, that is the beauty of this whole thing. Like we are with both people. We are with the couples as well as, you know, we are with the singles. Uh, and like we are really excited about how the activations are shaping up. And Silk actually has been activating Valentine's Day for some time now, this position on romance. And this year we are pushing the idea even further. So in addition to the, you know, the Silk blush pack, uh, that we have uh, this time people can also actually scan a silk bar which will take them to a, a micro site with curated content around how can they make this valentine's day even more special yeah uh, and on the other hand we have five star you know which has got a quirky counterculture light-hearted take on valentine's and while everybody is celebrating couples uh, five star is celebrating singles and it's telling singles that the best thing to do this Valentine's Day is to do nothing. Yeah, right. uh, and we will bring that to life in different ways. And one of the ways is actually you mentioned, right? The mush detector, mm -hmm. uh, which will, uh, it's a tech based application, which will enable people to escape all the mush that happens on a Valentine's Day. So we are with both. We are with couples as well as we are with the singles. <laughs> That's sitting on the fence, but I must say that I quite enjoyed watching uh, the five star uh, campaign. And it's again, um, you know, speaking about the same philosophy of uh, do nothing for five star, which has, uh, you know, several interesting, quirky, fun ads, uh, you know, under its belt for the past couple of years, couple of months. Uh, how has it worked for the brand so far, Nitin? It's worked very well, Shivani. So this whole point of view that you don't need to necessarily participate in everything for the fear of missing out. That has resonated very well with Gen Z, uh, which is the five stars point of view. So every time we have activated around this thought, we actually received a lot of love from consumers. So we feel very good about how we have done that with five star. Okay. Uh, also, you know, you took uh, charge of Mondelez as the vice president of marketing just uh, like a couple of months ago in November 2022. Correct me if I'm mistaken. Uh, what have the past few months been like for you, Nitin? Amazing. Like, you know, I've really enjoyed coming back uh, to this role and to, to back to India, first of all, because I was out uh, in the US doing a global role before this. So as I'm coming back, I'm kind of, you know, amazed by the work that the team is doing and the team has been doing over the last two to three years. We are winning a lot of external accolades. La last year, the team won more than 200 marketing awards. So I feel very proud, first of all, coming back and inheriting this great legacy and inheriting this great team. Uh, I'm also very excited about what's you know in progress and plans for the future. Uh, so feeling really, really good. I've spent a lot of time getting to know people better, and you know spending a lot of a lot of my time with with my team as well as with our uh, ecosystem because a lot of what we are able to achieve is because of the wonderful ecosystem we have, which is you know the great creative and media partners we have. So again, spending a lot of time with them, getting to know them, that has been my priority area. Wonderful. And as you mentioned, Mondelez India has been on a winning uh, spree for the past 
couple of years. Uh, how do you intend or your thoughts on taking this winning streak forward in the years to come? I think first of all, the way we are bringing the brand purpose to life by not just telling stories, but by doing real acts. And that has you know, worked really well for us. If you see over the last couple of years, uh, we have again some exciting plans on that in 23 and beyond. And the other thing that has worked well for us is how you know, we are looking at consumers as not just one consumer cohort, uh, but by looking at what their passion points are and then curating content in a way that reaches them uh, in a more meaningful way, which creates more impact with them. So we have planning to amplify our what we call as personalization at scale uh, approach uh, with the way we reach our consumers. And then third thing I would say is that you know, people are becoming more digital savvy. So again, we are working on a few uh, really good tech ideas, uh, which will allow us to reach consumers in an even more impactful way. Which one has been your personal favorite work? I would say that you know, the one that actually received a lot of awards, which is the uh, not just a Cadbury ad, mm -hmm. you know, which was a great example of Cadbury generosity mm -hmm. on us actually enabling small retailers to do well too. Uh, that I think had a purpose at its heart, but the way we brought that purpose to life in a very impactful way with technology playing an important role, uh, that campaign is one of my favorites coming out of the last uh, you know, two, three years. The other one I would say is the work we have been doing on Cadbury Dairy Milk generosity uh, work, which is around uh, acknowledge the unacknowledged. Uh, and uh, we have again, you know, we, we, uh, we, have, we have again been kind of bringing that to life and not by not just through communication or through ads, by actually, but, but by doing actual acts. And how are you stewarding uh, the Cadbury brand forward? I would say Cadbury, if you think of Cadbury and Cadbury Dairy Milk, which is synonymous with the chocolate category in India, I think there are several ways in which we want to push the brand forward. Uh, first of all, the, the whole idea around generosity is working very well. It, is, it, is, it brings us closer to people's hearts. Uh, and that we know has you know worked well for us in the past. Uh, you know the getting a strong emotional connection connection with the consumer is something that works very well. So you know we would continue to activate around generosity. You know as I just uh, spoke about, uh, and then of course we have opportunities to uh, drive penetration for the Cadbury brand with more households. Mm -hmm. And one of the opportunities that we are looking at is how do we get dairy milk in the fridge. How can we be the? How can we be an indispensable partner of the fridge? How can we drive stocking of chocolates? And that is an opportunity area. So how how are you doing that? So we have uh, you know a couple of initiatives over there. We would have a campaign uh, which will talk about uh, stock dairy milk in your fridge. How it is an indisp indispensable partner on your fridge. How having dairy milk in your fridge can lead to more meta moments at home. Uh, and then we also working on a a pack solution because right now. One of the challenges is that it's not always easy to stock dairy milk in the fridge. So we are also working on some stocking solutions uh, by way of a pack. Uh, so combination of this uh, would help us uh, get into more households. Okay. Uh, moving on, you just launched the third offering under Mondelez Cadbury Choco Bakes, uh, which is uh, the Choco Chip Cookies. Uh, so what is going to be your approach and strategy in the Choco Bakes uh, direction and how much is the focus on you know biscuits and uh, these bakery products we are actually getting great response from consumers and customers with the launch of the chocolate chip cookie and this will play an important role in solidifying our position in biscuits uh, along with oreo uh, we feel that there is great opportunity over here in fact the chocolate chip cookie market is the C segment is one of the biggest segments uh, in what we call as the choco bakery category uh, so, very uh, the early response is, is very good, very positive. And uh, is uh, building a strong position in uh, you know the premium cookies a priority for Mondelez? That is exactly true. We want to build a really strong position in premium cookies within the overall biscuit category, and that is our approach. Moving on, your global CMO Martin Renaud had uh, set ambitious goal of company becoming a global digital snacking leader with uh, greater investments in digital commerce and e-commerce, how are you executing it? It certainly applies to all the key markets around the globe and India is a key market in the Mondelez universe. It's very critical and strategic for Mondelez globally that you know, we do well in India. And that applies also to you know, how we look at digital and what you know, just said about you know, Martin's remark around making Mondelez a digital snacking powerhouse. And there are various elements to that. 
you know, including upping our investments on digital, making sure that, you know, we are investing behind what we call as personalization at scale. I touched upon that a little bit earlier right. that not all Gen Z are the same. You know, there are Gen Z, you can segment them by different passion points. Mm -hmm. And we have done that. So more than 50% of our investments on digital is actually personalized in nature. And that again become, goes into making Mondelez a, a global snacking digital powerhouse. And then finally, of course, uh, e-commerce is very important. That is a key, key priority for us in Mondelez India uh, to increase our contribution from uh, digital commerce. We have uh, teams working on that, in both marketing and sales sides. So absolutely aligned with Martin's so what is the what is the kind of work that we will see? One one you mentioned is uh, you know reaching uh, uh, the consumer in a personal manner, but what is the kind of work that we will see from Mondelez and investment from Mondelez India in the coming days in this direction? There would be uh, investment in terms of capabilities. So we are also investing behind what we call as the first party data mm -hmm. ecosystem, uh, and we feel that you know if we are able to reach people in a personalized way. Uh, through website, uh, through emailers or through other ways and through direct emailers that makes an even more uh, impact uh, with the consumers. Uh, what we also learning is that again if we are able to, if, if we know more about the consumer, we can actually curate content for them which makes more impact with them. So th this is a key capability we are, you know, we are building and it is not just acquiring uh, data, it is also how you enrich them and then deploy it in a meaningful way. I would say data is one big capability area. Mm -hmm. Analytics is another big capability area which allows us to then reach people in a personalized way. Mm -hmm. And then this whole area of digital commerce or e-commerce, it's such so fast evolving. Mm -hmm. We have new players coming, there is quick commerce. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand what the consumer is in each of these different e-commerce types and make sure that we are addressing what their needs are. So there would also be investment in terms of what we do from a marketing standpoint. Uh, not just serving ads on these different websites, but how do we create an experience uh, that makes a deeper impact with the consumers who are shopping on digital commerce. Uh, Nitin, finally, before we go in the face of challenging economic outlook for the year 2023, uh, how is Mondelez India changing its marketing priorities? I mean, I, certainly we look at, uh, you know, what uh, the macro trends are and we incorporate those trends in the way we plan. But I think also our learning is that as we look at the last few years that our categories have been quite resilient, the categories in which we operate in. Our brands are very strong and we have a strong distribution muscle. The combination of all of this has meant that we have been able to mitigate many of those headwinds and have done quite well. So if you ask me, I think our focus would be to continue to build strong brands, make sure we have strong distribution muscle, we are driving penetration of our brands and that's the best recipe. Again, as I said, consumer at the heart of everything, making sure that, you know, we have the right products, mm. uh, you know, for our consumers, uh, making sure that we build brands, strong brands, and our, and our ability to distribute those brands uh, is what uh, has worked for us. So we'll continue to focus and invest behind that. Nitin, thank you so much. Thanks for speaking with us. Thank you, Shivani. It was great to be here.